Folks, welcome back. In this episode, we're gonna show you how you can create simple yet stunning coasters just like these using Upstart Epoxy's Deep Pour Epoxy and a little handcrafted form that we made ourselves. Stay tuned. So we measured this out and it looks like we've got five inches by 25 inches, folks. So if we cut these in five inch sections, we're gonna make five coasters. Now let's get our wood and let's get it placed in here and cut to size. That way we can get to the fun part, the pour. Okay, folks, so we saw that our form is 25 by five. So we have 19 inches here, so this is perfect. What we need to do is we need to square this up. We've got seven and a half inches here. So we're gonna have to cut a little bit of this edge off and then we'll cut one down right down the line. So let's cut first and foremost. Just a little bit. And we said we have nine inches at its longest point. Actually, it's about eight and a half. It's about eight and a half. So let's go four inches. This is gonna cut this straight down the middle, folks. Then we should be able to place this in the form in two sections. So let's go four and a half. Here's how we measure it. Right there, that inside edge. We'll lock it in place. That's great, that's what we want. We want more character to be added to our coasters. So that's great. Now let's make sure, let's see what sizes we have here. So this one's right under five. So this will slide right in on, the, on our form. And then we have this one that's right under four. So this one's sliding even better. So if we can visualize our form, we have it kind of like this so far. And then we'll slowly throw in this piece right there. So, let me go get the form. Okay. okay, folks, so we went ahead and we got our form and we brought it out here. And I cut a little straight sliver edge off this. And I went ahead and popped this in. And look, that's a perfect fit right there, folks. There's enough wood and there's enough room for the epoxy to come in. So let's put this other piece in here. And look at that, it lines up perfect there. And look at how it keeps the uniformity and it keeps kind of a, a little river, a little channel, if you will. That's what you always want. You don't just want to randomly place pieces in there because then it looks like you randomly place pieces in there. Okay, that's it. Let's go inside, let's tape it up and let's get to pouring this baby. Always like to wear gloves, folks, because epoxy work is a very sticky job. So we're gonna go ahead and get our mold all sealed up. You always wanna get all these angles, all these slats, all these corners sealed with silicone because you don't want leaks at this level. excess I like to get the edges here catch it right there as well that way we're good folks we're gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes we're gonna put our heat gun to warm up by that time we'll be ready to place and pour okay folks we're back always crucial level always make sure your project is level folks or that's the beginning of a bad day for you. So we're gonna go ahead and just give this a little dab of hot glue right here, not a lot, and right here. We're gonna plane these after. So what we'll do is we'll end up planing the hot glue off. So if you don't have 
you know, weights that you want to put on there or if you don't have anything you can put on there to keep it down. A little dab of hot glue never hurt anybody. Let's see, do we like this side? Yeah, we do. Okay, let's go here. A little here. A little there. Put this down here. Push it down. I like to hold it for about a good five, ten seconds. Let it do its thing. Okay, that's good there. We see that it is held on. It is. Now this is a lot of wood, so we're not gonna need as much epoxy on this. And you don't want your coaster super, super thick. So it's always best to down on the side of caution. Dude, we're gonna go three and one and a half because it's a two to one ratio, folks. So we're gonna go 24 inches of part A. And then we're gonna do one and a half of the hardener, part B. So let's go one, nice and slow, that way we don't pass that half mark. And boom, perfect. Yeah. Okay. And let's pour some of this in there. The cool thing about this black onyx is it'll have a nice little metallic hue to it. It won't be a matte. So we'll spice it up a little. Oh, for three days, 72 hours, come back, pop it out of the mold, and finish it up. See you then. Okay, folks, so when you pull it out of the mold, it's always a really good idea to run it through uh, your table saw here or if you have a circular saw, whatever saw you have to use, use it. It's always a good idea to run it through and just get this edge off. Run this crisp edge off. That way you expose the wood again and you remove this excess epoxy. Then it's always a good idea to come to your chop saw if you have one. And just get these little edges right here. It makes it so much easier. To just come down with one fell swoop and knock this extra. Okay, so now you see how this, how it's raised here? Because we didn't want to cover it too much with epoxy and make these suckers like an inch and a half thick. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this excess, then we're going to hit it with the planer, then off to sanding, Cutting, finishing. There it 
is, folks. You can see that it's all nice and flattened and ready to go in the plate. Now here's a good pro tip guys. The backs of really, if you're doing a charcuterie board, coasters, anything that's gonna go through your router, see how slick this surface is from the epoxy? A good uh, rule of thumb, a good pro tip that you can use is to sand this down because your the wheels on the planer here sometimes have a hard time grabbing this because it's so slippery and, and shiny like this. So what I like to do is I'll get some sandpaper or I'll get my sander and I'll sand it down real quick. Just that way it gives the the turning wheels inside the planer uh, more grip on this on this bottom side. So see, now we have it scuffed up, so now it should make it a little easier for the planer's wheels to put it in motion. So when it comes out of the planer, it's already like at an 80 grit, borderline 100 grit roughness. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with 120 then go up to 8, 180, 240, 320, finish with 400. So what we'll do is we'll just get our sides, like here, our sides here. We're gonna take these up to 180. We don't need to go all the way up to 400 on these. So it looks like we're sitting at 24 and a half inches, folks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out in four inch increments. That should give us six coasters. So we'll do four, eight, 12, 16, 20, and 24. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna come and we're gonna get our handy dandy measuring square here. butt this up against the edge and actually what we want to do is we want to come to four inches right here so you see that this is four inches here so what we'll do is we'll make a little mark right here kind of hard to see I can see it a lot easier then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna mark it because we know that's four inches now just to for checks and balances, we're gonna make sure that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and mark another one here. because This is eight inches. That'll be our second coaster. And we'll come here. Bust that one out. And we'll do that all the way down, folks, to 24 inches. Okay, we've got all our lines cut out there. Now, if we were gonna bevel this, I would do it now. But we're not gonna bevel these coasters. We're not gonna bevel the edge with our hand uh, router. We're just gonna leave these square and make them traditional. So let's go off to the chopping saw and we'll cut these all out. Okay, folks, here we are. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna line these up accordingly. I always like to go right in the middle. That way I have some play with the other ones. I'm gonna butt those up right on those lines that I cut out and we're ready for business. And all we're left with is this little piece. What you can use it for, let your minds be creative. Maybe like a little coubaton or something. I don't know, but we'll figure out something to do with it. We're almost there, folks. All we have to do is sand these edges that we just cut off with the chop saw and polish these 
put the backer pads on, and we're golden. always a really good idea to remember to put your backer pads on before you put your finishing oil on. And the reason that I say that is because we're going to apply a finishing oil on there and to try and get those backer pads to stick over oil, good luck with that. So I always like to oil it first. Then you can use whatever you want. You can use Odie's oil, Walrus oil, whatever you want to use, whatever kind of finishing oil you want to use to go ahead and finish these off. We're just gonna apply a little bit here and make sure you rub it real thoroughly all over the whole coaster. Well, that's a wrap, folks. We hope you enjoyed this video and we hope that you found it informational and helpful. If you have any comments, make sure and leave them down below. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure and do that. Once again, this has been Steve with Upstart. We'll see you next time.